Now this modulated signal can easily be demodulated at the receiver by multiplying it again with the carrier cos of omega ct and this is the same carrier that we used at the transmitter. And when we multiply these two signals, we get this signal which is m of t cos square of omega ct. Now we know that the cos square of omega ct, it is equal to 1 plus cos 2 of omega ct divided by 2. So when we multiply 1 plus cos of 2 omega ct divided by 2 with the m of t, we get this signal. Now this signal is passed through the low pass filter and as a result the cos of 2 omega ct component which is a high frequency component it is eliminated and as a result we get m of t divided by 2 which is the actual signal and this signal is located at the 0 hertz frequency. We can also visualize the demodulation operation of the amplitude modulated signal in the frequency domain. Now this multiplication operation is again translated into the convolution operation and this is our amplitude modulated signal and this is the Fourier transform of the carrier signal. Now when we convolve these two signals and if this is our overall amplitude modulated signal, two copies of this signal would be formed. The first one would be formed at minus omega c and the second copy would be formed at omega c. Now when the first copy of this signal is formed at minus omega c, the center point of this signal which is at 0 hertz, this center point would move to minus omega c and this part of the signal would move to the minus 2 omega c location while this part of the signal would move to the 0 hertz frequency location. Similarly, a copy of this signal would be formed at omega c that means that the minus omega c part of the signal would move to the 0 hertz again and these two signals would add up and we would get this signal and the omega c part of this signal would move to 2 omega c. Now when this signal is passed through the low pass filter, the original unmodulated signal can be recovered using the low pass filter.